Radicalism is an insidious disease, lurking in the shadows for generations before festering and spewing its poisonous lies like a virulent plague. And no more shall the malcontents and socialists hide in the dark recesses of society. Europe has become a graveyard of fallen governments, once proud nations reborn as nightmarish visions of terror and tyranny. Germany has long been consumed by the rod, Britain torn asunder, France and the Lowlands mere husks of their former glory. The list of the defiled grows even longer. I have witnessed the danger firsthand, as their serpentine diplomats slither through my halls whispering empty promises of friendship, sowing seeds of resentment among my people against the very hand that sustains them. My house is ancient, its roots spurring deeper than almost all other great families still standing, and I hold it as my sacred duty to preserve order and stability in this crumbling world. Yet the crimson tide of socialism rises, lapping at the shores of Italy while my forces become stretched thinner by the day. How ironic that I, a man raised to this throne through the flames of rebellion and civil war, must now sacrifice to extinguish the inferno threatening to consume all we hold dear. The chronicles of history may brand me, Simone the Unifier, the Butcher, the Godless, but such titles mean nothing to me. I am Simon Torres, heir to a greatness I can only strive to uphold. This will not be the twilight of my family's legacy. Our rebirth shall be forged in blood and tempered steel. Beyond that, we have undergone an economic explosion really around the last 20 years, but especially the last 15, with all the new types of technology coming along, allowing innovation us being on more or less the cutting edge of a lot of technology alongside the Germans and the British. As you can see here from our GDP growth, really grown very quickly. And in recent years, we have also finally reestablished and built up a proper, strong Sardinian Navy with 105 battalions and around 60 flotillas, which will raise to around 100 when they're done building up. We do not have by any means the strongest military in the world, but we're no longer what we were. We did make an alliance of convenience with the Scandinavians, which is really just about self-preservation more than anything else. We also do have a defensive pact with Savoy A, though they are not very strong. We are rivals with now the British, the Castellans, and the French. We have trade agreements with the uh, Mexicans and Sulawesi, which is in modern-day Indonesia to the east. We are in a customs union with Egypt and Somalia, Cuba notably last session, leading our customs union to join the German one instead. A lot of the markets of the world have concentrated. The British market includes uh, Castellan, Louisiana, all of South America, and the Spanish. The French include the Scandinavians, as well as the Americans. And then the Chagatai include most of Southeast Asia, as well as the Japanese and their colonies in Africa, which have grown dramatic. Our own colonies are really still growing up in the north, but the rest we have been really pushed out by the Germans and the Chagatai. Our capital society is developing into the center of Art Nouveau style of art. Art Nouveau, mostly in connection with Italy, also Stila Liberty, is an art historical epoch at the turn of the 19th to 20th century. We got a lot of prestige and more musical tradition as well. So, to be fair, the Germans and the British are still the musical centers of the world. We also have a lot of construction points. We're mainly looking to obviously build up our defenses. We have a lot of fortresses being built all over the western portions of North Africa and Italy proper. And we're going to be expanding our battalions and military even more right after this. And then we'll go back to working on industry. We really need to build up a large, prominent European uh, army, given that we don't have the allies we used to. For a while there... We could kind of rest easy given that we had alliances of interest at one time with both the Shagatai and the British. But given both of those are now gone, and our only defensive alliances with Savoy A, who could field 13 battalions, and alliance with Scandinavia can field 81, we kind of have to protect ourselves at this point. So we are fully militarizing. Troops in Lazio have reported more and more confrontations with a belligerent mobs. Fighting will likely break out soon, even if nothing is ordered. There are two ways to control the situation. Either pull the troops back or tell them to engage. We'll send in the troops. Suman has become even tougher in his later years. Just a reminder, we have uh, four major political parties in our country. The right is firmly in control underneath Simone Torres. There is the Communist Party, which recently split with the PSI, the Trade Unionists and Socialists split with the Revolutionary Socialists. And then the left, which is the Radical Liberals, Liberals, Professionals, and Bureaucrats. Ordered to violently suppress a popular revolt in Tehran, a battalion of the Albanian garrison has refused their orders, claiming that the execution of such a command would run contrary to laws of men and gods alike. Insubordination! We're going to jail them all. America is still a monarchy. They, so, okay, interesting situation with that. 
the, the late uh, Fikomon Emperor of America actually died. He was assassinated with an in-game event last session. And in his place, there's now Guillermo Alfonso de Fikomon, who is a pacifist liberal with crippling mental afflictions. America is in a very tumultuous political era right now. I would imagine a lot of that has to do with probably like a lot of the southern states, which are made up of really not a lot of actually uh, ex-slave states in this timeline. Remember, there was very few uh, slaves brought over from Africa to the American colony due to it being banned in EU4 by the American colony. But instead, there's a lot of basically Native American population in the southern states in this timeline who similar would probably be very much obviously politically disenfranchised. Most of the uh, basically Native American cultures in the South, which are politically disenfranchised, are leading the movement for actually radical left governments. As the flames of revolution encroach on Albania, a violent strike has engulfed the Tirana tooling workshops. During escalation of further loss of profits, a cabal of Castellan shareholders have petitioned the government for immediate aid, offering the assistance of off-duty Castellas gendarmerie station across the border. We can't, we can't be doing that. Our own law enforcement is capable of handling us. Yeah, we really need more steel. That's mostly what our construction is coming out of, and I think the prices are inflated, which is going to be hurting our budget quite badly. Yeah, we have a deficit of 3,000. The price is up by 16%. From a lot of those raw resources, we are now so clearly in need of. And it's really looking, like I said last session, like we have to fight a colonial war, but until either we get a much bigger, stronger military or we get another big ally, that's just not an option for us, unfortunately. Really, the only big powers we could contend with and, and ally with are the Byzantines who hate us, the French who I will fucking die before we ally with, and I think our country feels the same, the Lithuanians, which is actually an option, or the Castellans, which we're also not doing, given that the radicals in Britain and Germany are just completely so dominant economically and militarily. Then as if in a dream, a fog, it seemed to me that some young man, a small stature, was in a hurry to get off the sidewalk onto the pavement towards the Sovereign's carriage and hurled himself towards it, as to which there was a deafening explosion. As soon as the crash rang out, the Sovereign, the officers surrounding him, and the observers on the pavement nearby, they all at once fell. A cloud of white smoke obscured them all. He just killed Simon Taurus. For too long, the proud island of Sardinia has languished, its glory faded since the days of Emperor Solomon's divine rule over our island empire. My father lost faith that our noble lineage would ever reclaim our ancestral birthright. He perished in exile, a broken man forgotten in a foreign land. But in his dying breath, he rekindled the fire within me to fight for our return home. The decades since I seized the throne through bloody civil war have been an arduous path lined with sacrifice. Many nights, I dreamed of relinquishing these burdens to return to my youthful life as a simple officer and explorer. But a Torres must never embrace complacency. Let history etch my name as the one who dragged our family out of the darkness and restored the blazing light of sovereignty over Sardinia. I have paid a heavy toll to wear this crown and wield this scepter once more. But all was worthwhile to honor my father's dying wish and raise our ancient dynasty back to its rightful primacy. When my rule ends, I shall join him in eternal rest, our family's pride reinstated for generations to come. He's 10. He wouldn't be seeking revenge. He'd just be fucking terrified and sad his father's dead. Scatter the murderer's ashes in the river and mourn our beloved king. Moment of silence for Simon Torres, the man came from Asia and Japan, placed his family once more back on the throne of Sardinia and built probably one of the greatest golden eras, especially economically in the history of our family. In the continuing tradition of our family, a child sits upon the throne of Cesare, Donato Torres. We know very little about the young man. He's 10 years old. Much like many of his ancestors, he has a uh, definitely a bit of a taste for the finer things in life. Business interest group, moderate politically, raised in Southern Italy. He's not super well liked, but he's not hated either. He'd probably have a lot of obviously uh, liking for him after the death of his father, who was I'm sure very well loved, especially in Italy proper. Not the time to have this happen either. So many revolutionaries in our country, 
Our nation is surrounded by radicals. The greatest powers in the world are radical and all hostile to us. I gotta give my second to adjust here. I'm mourning internally a little bit. So let's let's also take a moment to think about what would even be happening in our country right now. We we have a looming civil war by admittedly not a very popular faction, but you know obviously when the revolutionaries beat the Torres brothers, you know not less than a hundred years ago, they also were not that numerous. So this could get out of hand very quickly. I feel like a lot of the revolutionaries, given many of them would be not as radical as some, would probably see like the the act of like terrorism and bombing of the king as illegitimate and the wrong way. Like for the revolutionist uh, socialists, they'd, they'd all be fucking cheering, right? But for a lot of the other factions supporting like the reformist socialists, the trade unionists, and maybe even the anarchists, right? They probably would not have been supportive of an action like this. Maybe some, but a lot of them would probably be second guessing the actions of the revolution, or at least have some moral qualms about assassination like that. The young king would not be in charge. He'd be raised probably by his political advisors and his mother, who would still be alive. Given that the conservatives are by far the strongest faction in the ruling party, we're going to have him taken under the wing of, oh God, Giuseppe Caraga. A tactful, experienced political operator who's tough, a great diplomat, and he has a bit of a predilection towards opium. Strong man, but hopefully his, uh, his vices don't rub off on the young king. We'll say that Giuseppe is more or less kind of going to be politically... Not in charge of the country, but more of the leading element. And then what economic group do we have in, in power? The business interests. Arnif Mikhail Barberini Colana. Kind, inventor, well-traveled, imperious, with uh, psychological affliction. He was a royalist. Everyone hates him, but he is loyal to us, which is what matters. So Colana and Giuseppe will more or less be guiding young Donato. The era of Simona is over. The era of Donato has begun. Just in time for the turn of the century, too. Two years away. There's a, obviously, there's probably a stock market crash after the king's death. I mean, radicals threatening revolution assassinating the king would almost certainly result in a stock market crash. So we'll raise taxes to compensate with that and we'll halt trading for the moment in Sasari. We can send another expedition to the Pacific as well. This is the second one we've sent to the Pacific. In, in honor of the death of Simone, a man who in his younger years explored the jungles of Borneo and was always a great proponent for exploring the no world and finding anything wherever curiosity may lead the enterprising explorer. In honor of his death, been our railways a little bit, given we're about to centralize even more of our industry in these, the hotbeds. Tuscany, uh, Campania, Napoli, and Cesare have kind of become the industrial heartlands of modern Sardinia. North Africa is not as relevant really as much as it used to be in many ways with the incorporation of Italy proper and all the wealth and more educated people there and jobs that are possible. However, one, a minor member of the Carso Sardinian nobility has been assassinated by revolutionary forces at his estate in the Western Sahara. The surviving members of his family are demanding reprisals. They really have no moral qualms, do they? We're going to declare another state of national mourning. Electrical generation. It is possible to capture the very essence of lightning and use it to power all sorts of different types of machinery. We got actual electricity. We would obviously not be the first nation to have it. I'm sure Germany and England already do. Let's go for reinforced concrete. And the first thing we're going to do now is try and obviously build electrical generation in the capital and power the capital city with street lamps. A band of revolutionaries rumored to affiliate with the trade unionists have overwhelmed a minor garrison in Sicily, leaving two dozen soldiers dead and running off of crates full of rifles and ammunition, even wheeling off a small caliber cannon. We'll try and go after them. We'll make the offer. An ambassador has traveled from Sasari to Amsterdam to treaties with the current ruling party ruled over by Wilhelm van Kolverden, who is, despite being fairly liberal by modern standards in this era, he's radical in a moderate fashion, in a progressive liberal fashion. You know, he wants women to have rights. Fucking crazy. He, he wants his people to have high standards of living and actual money in their profits. Even more crazy. But he's not calling for like, you know, the murdering of monarchs. Uh, the removement of religion from countries or anything like the Germans. We can work with him. He's a reasonable enough guy, even if he's obviously a little far out there. Economics over politics with the business interests in charge. So, dissidents in Sicily have announced plans for a major march around government offices in the near future. While they profess peaceful uh, intentions and claim everyone will be unharmed, the march itself will obviously serve as a rallying point for those unhappy with the government. We are not going to allow the march. 
There's some other countries we can get into our economic uh, pact as well. Provence will join, and Savoy would both as well. Not huge economies, but significant ones. And given, obviously, we're looking to expand our influence, a, a general military junta in Provence, and then obviously the Dukes of Savoy were friendly with growth, so let's offer them entrance into our economic pact. It is, it is, come and leave as you will. We'd have to give them an obligation. I think that's fine. Same with Suluisi, why not? They have a lot of really cheap Asian goods we could use. How strong as Provence? Strong enough a defensive pack would actually be useful. Like I said, we're also really looking for allies here. We've got a lot of very strong enemies and almost no allies right now, so... We'd be pretty close to desperate. Grand Colombia might give us a defensive agreement too. They're very strong. Underneath Magdalena Garcia. Their government is also actually very conservative by all standards. They'd be never a good ally. We'll say that the leader of the conservatives is orchestrating all these political moves. Given that he can kind of operate how he wants now that Simone is dead. We're giving out a lot of obligations, but if we could secure ourselves from just outright attack, it's going to be worthwhile. Oh, Mexico would actually give us a trade agreement, I think. Sure. So Luis has joined our customs union. Savoy has joined our customs union. Provence has joined our customs union. I think women's rights is pretty popular. We're going to decide this based on the traits of uh, Donato when he comes of age. Obviously, I feel like, I think at this point, women's suffrage would probably actually be a pretty big movement in our country, given that it's been actually already allowed in several big countries, that both, I think, radical ones and not radical ones. Lithuania gave women property rights before the rest of Europe. So yeah, given it's not huge in Europe, Germany and Lithuania both have given women property rights. It's very common in the Americas, which we trade a lot with, right? So we'd have a pretty big suffrage movement probably developing in our country. If we look at our politics, we can also see that we have it. At an event to commemorate the opening of the ornamental garden in Cesare, a revolutionary detonated an explosive device near Donato Torres. Whew. The king survived, but the assassin died of his wounds before testifying. As soon as the bomb detonated and the explosion split the air, the crowd was already on the would-be assassin, heedless of their own wounds, bearing him down, beating him with their uh, bags and fists. People of Sardinia, Corsica, I did it for you, shouted the assassin, but it was to no avail. So Donato survived, but he's now scarred. So he was caught in the blast and made him more popular. The radicals be like, listen, we know we're not going to win the civil war, but if we keep killing kings, we're going to rule eventually. Our monarchy is struggling right now. We need, we need, we need to really go for stronger uh, domestic security. Secret police we have. We need to, we need to give them more resources. We need to level up home affairs. To do so, we'll need to get more bureaucracy. I'm going to lower our colonial affairs investment actually to, to zero, basically. And with those uh, bureaucratic resources, we're going to put it all into home affairs. Our government, after the assassination of our previous king and the almost killing of our current young heir, would be scrambling to try and give the police more resources to go after these radicals and terrorists. The radicals are completely slowing down construction efficiency, too. Donato Torres, he is a moderate politically, right? But I think roleplay-wise, he'd probably be walking away of this. He might honestly get PTSD. It wouldn't be, like, unrealistic for him to get psychological affliction, not gonna lie. But I guess he didn't get that. So he's, he's made a tougher stuff. But he's probably... I'm gonna roleplay that he has pretty much a lifelong hatred for the radical socialists. Given he's a moderate, I don't think it would just be, like, a blanket hatred for all, anyone who's not conservative. But specifically for the radical socialists, given that they killed his father and almost killed him. The radical Germans have a revolt from an even more radical government. When we get the bureaucracy, we're going to begin to plan construction of the skyscraper in Napoli. Civil war in the Scarsa Sardinian Indonesian company in Asia. So this is the second liberal revolt we've had in the company in the last five years, I think, actually. All right, let's go ahead and send a contingent of forces to support our allies in the company. And then we will send Persico to support in the South as well. We also need another big general commandeer the forces of Italy proper. Well, of Gulio Garcia. He's solid. I'm going to fire the other two. Where is the, where is the radical? There he is. Sm another Smidushi. We'll retire both of those. Reserved and a pillager. He will command the main portion of the Sardinian army out of Italy proper. Opportunistic members of the bureaucratic interests have defeated the anarchist cause. Wonderful. Defected. And that's not defeated. That's defected. Try and coax. No, oh God, we can't take that bureaucracy hit. So be it. Donato Torres mistook an enemy of the professional interests after accusing them of false charges. Moderates of the professional interests, oh fuck, have defected to the trade unionist cause. He's young. He would have been overwhelmed with hatred towards liberals after the death of his father. 
The briefest flash of anger can make an enemy of a friendly face. Can make even the staunchest allies split each other over misunderstanding. And once it is cast, there's no going back. Tactful, experienced diplomat, experienced political operator. We're going to make Donato Taurus stand down. It's the right call. He's wise enough to probably, like, make it clear to the king. The revolution, which has been really brewing for the last 10 years, which resulted in the death of King Simon Torres, and what resulted almost in the death of Donato Torres, has now officially been lit. In southern Italy, with the stockpiles of arms that had been stolen over the last several years from our garrisons, forces of the Revolutionary Republic with 30,000 men strong, mostly untrained, but uh, they're going to get our bonuses, so they will be very trained, prepare to take on the armies of Sardinia. And in a shocking and brazen support of murderous radicals, the governments of the British Republic have joined to support on their behalf with President Gregory Palazar, a extremist revolutionary supporting the proletariat revolution in Sardinia, the once allies of our own nation. In an act of desperation, we had the support of Scandinavia to our defensive alliance and Peru. We also offered an obligation to our old friends in Japan for their joining in the war, which they have agreed to do, resulting in what appears in many ways to be an advantage on our side, but in reality with the British Navy is still very much one-sided on behalf of the British. We have 20, we have 40 left. Let's try and demand something for the British if we win. Let's deploy the forces of Garcia to Southern Italy. The rest we will keep in their HQs. I'm going to remove NTC. We're going to consolidate all of our Navy underneath one Admiral. Immediately try and push the revolutionary state if we can. Try and knock them out of the war and deal with Britain alone. We got to put fast and we got to push hard. Scandinavia leading the offensive. General Hans Vadensten. He's a very good general. Tough fencer, stalwart defender, grifter, experienced defensive planner, ambitious. Alliance with the Scandinavians already paying off here. A clear victory here in the Battle of uh, Matera. Oh, they took, they took, uh, we also pushed in the Congo. Let's send a contingent to take their other colonial holding. They must be in more than one war. Oh my god, they're in fucking three wars. They're in the French Civil War. They're in our Civil War. And they're invading Paulus in India. Oh, this is a huge opportunity. Let's start fucking taking their colonial holdings. Fuck it, we go on the offensive. Smiducci, you're landing in West Africa. Let's go. This is huge. They are so overstretched right now. They have almost no support from the British right now, I think. The Japanese have sent forces too. Underneath General Shigaru Hayashi, who is advancing in the tip of uh, Italy. You know, I got to say, our recent alliances and our old friendships are really paying off what it matters, huh? This is the time we need allies, and surprisingly, I didn't expect it. Allies we do have. Landing in West Africa. The forces of General Cardino Palmieri are landing in Guinea. Our army is way better than theirs. I did not expect that. Wow, look at that. No general. You overstretched Britain. You radical liberal fucks. Free dreadnoughts. Oh, we are we are cooking now. We definitely don't have enough uh, ammunition for this, but let's do it. We're already so overstretched. We might as well go further. Britain does have modern navy as well now, by the way. So we are only now equal to them. Oh, God. Hold on. Are we contending it? 20 ships versus 120 British ships. Come on, baby. Oh, my God. We're contending it. Holy Christ. Oh, it broke the game we were doing so well. Even if this battle doesn't happen again, I'm making that cannon in the storyline. We fought that fucking Navy. We're really pushing quickly in Western Africa, too. Almost completely unopposed. We won. Revolutionary Sardinia has been put down. The rebels have been routed in the south of Italy. Their command structure gone. They have fled to radical shores far away from Sardinia. After the fall of their African colonies and the lifeline of resources to the British Empire spread thin in the civil war in France and their invasion in India, they were forced to treaties with our government after the sinking of half of their navy in the Western Mediterranean, showing our naval prowess once more. 
We have defeated the British. We're going with the Treaty of Cagliari. The, the final naval battle took place off the coast of Cagliari. Brazil will change to our customs union. We're, we would be so respected and feared probably after this war. We took on the greatest naval power in the world and one of the largest of the great powers in Europe. I mean, there's a lot of countries that would be looking at us with very different eyes after this, I would say. So today, of course, because growing colonial empire in Africa, along with new means to prevent malaria, has made us a serious contender for colonial control of the continent. I mean, our, our colony has just literally doubled in size in Africa. The French are a republic. Oh my God, you are a radicals! Chancellor Antoine de Bourbon Condé, a liberal, a part of a radical liberal government that has seized power in France. They have fallen, ladies and gentlemen. Paris has fallen, officially. We are now of four remaining great powers in Europe had not falling to radicalism. Our economy is in really good shape now, after all those innovations. We're not growing very quickly. And we are the third economic power now, by the way. We have surpassed the British Empire, or British Republic, I should say. But we are very, very far behind the Germans and the Chagatai. We can get a defensive pact with the Americans. Let's do it. They're very conservative, one of the few remaining powers in the world. We've been, we've been good friends with them for quite some time. Ah, oh, beautiful. Look, look at all those mar marginalized radicals. I don't like marginalized groups. Unless they're radical socialists. Then I like them nice and nice and marginalized. There we go. He's nice and dripped out now. At 13, he finally developed a fashion sense. Ra liberal revolt in Scandinavia. She's a radical liberal. Why are you revolting against her? But she's got a conservative government, ironically. It's very weird. We have an agitator for our presidential republic. Francesco Zunica has appeared. Let's immediately expel him. He showed up on the dockyards of Cagliari, ready to spread radicalism. And the secret police picked him up two days later and threw him right back in the ocean. Simone Belung is still very much a bigoted slaver. Hesse is like the most cursed, but like fucking wild shit of this campaign. The Germanic, Northern Germanic slave state where Germans are enslaving like other Germans. His ideology is literally slaver too. Look at that. Germany and Britain just declared a rivalry. We got a little war in Africa. We'll win this no problem though. So this isn't a big issue. We'll send Persico to win this. We're not going to join this war. We're going to we're going to attack one of these countries when they're being attacked by the Chagatai is what we're going to do. We're going to attack Britain. Or we're going to attack Castella here. This is a huge opportunity to go after either of their colonial empire. It means Castel will still have their alliance with Germany, but given Britain is now rivals with Germany, going to war with Britain is probably the play here. 